Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tibbet for Thursday, June 21st. Here's the Atlantic, and first of all, uh, way up here to the north, where you can't see it on this image, is a Chris, which has been upgraded to a hurricane as of this morning by the Hurricane Center. And uh, this is worth mentioning because he is here, first hurricane of the season with an eye clearly visible there. Very impressive storm, and I think it's just amazing uh, that such a storm uh, can develop over water so cold. He's moving into waters colder than 21 degrees Celsius now, and another great example of one of these somewhat hybridish storms that aren't really of truly tropical origin and yet develop this strongly and become hurricanes similar to Epsilon of 2005 and Vince in 2005 as well. These cl this class of storms is very interesting and uh, raises more questions on what to do with these kinds of storms in the future. But he is no threat to land and is just a really great, interesting feature to watch. But we have bigger things going on close to home right now. Notice again the activity starting to focus in the Gulf of Mexico. And this pattern is going right where we've been talking about it going for the last two weeks. Uh, notice that the trade winds coming out of the tropics are bending to the northwest and piling in over here into the Gulf, causing convergence and piling up of air in this part of the world. And now you can see all the thunderstorms going off because of the right air with the help of the strong MJO pulse that is now directly over our part of the world and you can see the East Pacific monsoon trough in response is way up here in Central America with the trade winds feeding in and everything is coming together to give us the pattern of activity that we are currently under. Notice that we still have a bit of a sheared environment over the Gulf here, but shear is lessening, especially over the area of the Yucatan Channel. As you can see, the cirrus clouds aren't moving around as fast in here, again, because this upper low near Florida is moving northward, while this one over South Texas is continuing to spin away, kind of starting to ventilate this region here and allowing anticyclonic flow to develop aloft, which uh, lowers the wind shear and improves divergence. So uh, the, this region is becoming slowly more favorable here, uh, but notice we still have a fair elongated area of surface low pressure and you can see that better if we zoom in on it here the sun's only been up for a few minutes that's a consequence of me getting up this early to do this but here's the low you can see this here but notice there's a good tail back here this is an elongated circulation we have two centers one trying to develop out here and one over the northwest part of the Yucatan that developed yesterday actually off the land and moved out towards the coast here which is interesting and this is basically basically an extension down to the monsoon low trying to enter the Bay of Campeche so overall still an elongated situation but you can see the convective blow up here to the southeast and uh, this is going to start to organize slowly again is going to be here for several days so it has plenty of time to become a named storm and I think will probably develop at some point before it gets out of our hair. Now we're going to jump right into the models this morning because the big, big question with the system is the track. It's so amazing that the models disagree this much uh, so soon before the storm is supposed to make landfall. Uh, here's the GFS 120 hours out. Notice it has the main storm out here, but it's still got something back over the Gulf, so it's elongated. Typical problem, I think, of the GFS showing itself again, showing the energy strung out too much. This should be a more concentrated storm, sheared or not, as it exits, even if it does come northeast here. Uh, here's the Canadian model, which is uh, now back for the last two runs now, yesterday's 12Z and last night's 0Z, in my camp of uh, bringing this into the Northwest Gulf. This is a hurricane moving towards Texas. The UK Met is in the same spot, but perhaps more realistic in intensity here, as it's uh, unlikely that this would become that strong of a hurricane taking that path. Uh, but it's interesting now, though, these models are still, we're still talking about five, six, seven days before landfall of the system. And uh, the worry here is that if it does stay around in the Gulf this long, because of the pattern that we've been talking about, it's going to be meandering around in the central Gulf for quite a while before it picks either west or northeast for a path. The problem with that is since the models keep pushing the time period back, it may be that this has enough time to get better organized than originally thought and could become a stronger storm in the end. But we will have to uh, figure that out more once we have the track nailed down because right now that's what's going to matter a lot and the track will affect the intensity. This is the Japanese model also in the northwest part of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, broad low disorganized at this point. You can see all the rain off to the east indicating a sheared system. Uh, this is again at 120 hours. Now here's the European, and this is at day 7, and this has a 
a Cat 1 hurricane or so moving towards the Florida Panhandle on its way out to the northeast. It actually brings it over the water here and becomes a Cat 3 off of Cape Hatteras, which may be a little bit overdone, uh, but right now what we're focusing on is in the Gulf, and uh, this strengthens, and a couple of runs have been showing this now, and the European is now in the camp of the GFS, bringing this northeast out of the Gulf. Now, if we look at the European ensembles, 500 millibar height by day five, here's what we have. You can see uh, the variance in the ensemble members down in the Gulf, showing that this is sitting around in the central part of the Gulf. You can see the trough digging to the northeast, and this is the trough that is supposed to bring this out if it's going to come to the northeast into this trough to the east of this big Texas ridge. Now the problem I have with this is that although yes it's pretty hard to move towards this ridge while you have such a sharp trough in the northeast you're asking this trough to have an influence exerted all the way to 90 west while there's a trough along the west coast of the United States over here. These troughs uh, are very close together asking for a storm to to be recurved out of 90 west with a trough so close by to the west of this ridge. Uh, the pattern looks a little too squished for that to me still, and that's why the models are still disagreeing and forking off, one half going towards Texas and the other half going northeast. They're still split, which is amazing given that we're so close in on this fork in the road but it's still a, a very tough forecasting situation. Now what's interesting is actually, although the European operational is bringing this into the trough, if you go to, out to 168 hours on the ensemble, notice that most of the members actually have this getting into the Northwest Gulf. They actually have it getting trapped by the ridge uh, that bananas over the top here and captures it as the trough leaves, which is interesting because this is the idea I've had and the ensembles actually see this more than the operational does. So it'll be interesting to see what this morning's runs tell us when they come in. Uh, we're going to have to look at those. And right now it's a bit of model watching, but really uh, the pattern that we've been setting up here is going towards what we said. Uh, but ultimately the exact uh, track that this takes is going to be dependent on the location of this trough and the timing of the trough and the exact location of low pressure development in the Gulf and uh, this is what we have the computers for doing the nitty-gritty calculations that are necessary to see whether this trough is strong enough those kind of calculations we can't always do for ourselves and this is why we have the models so chances are when th they finally agree and come to a consensus more than likely that is what the storm will do after they agree but for now uh, they're still split basically down the middle in terms of uh, what the support is for the track here. I still believe this is coming west, but you cannot discount uh, the northeast escape route either. So as awful as it is to say, but the entire Gulf Coast here, uh, we can't narrow it down much more than that right now. You can still, we should all still be watching uh, for the potential for this to be making landfall as a tropical cyclone all along from Florida uh, to the Texas North Mexico coastline. Chances are it would either be Florida or Texas, but this entire region could get affected by the storm, uh, at least by heavy rains. Florida is already getting tens of inches from this, and uh, we're going to be having this around for another five, six, seven days or more uh, before it's actually out of our hair. And uh, it's a large system, will take its time organizing, but it does have the time to sit around here and get going. So chances are this will become Debbie and uh, will be affecting uh, the Gulf of Mexico forecast is still for hot and sunny in the northwest part of the Gulf I think that will still get busted but again the entire Gulf Coast here needs to be aware of this as we will probably have a landfalling tropical cyclone later this weekend and early next week on the United States coastline in this pattern so we shall monitor this closely and we shall see what happens that's it for today thanks for watching